Joining us now, we have Ken Klopenstein. He is investigative reporter for The Intercept with a great new scoop. Great to see you, Ken. Good to be with you, guys. Welcome to the studio. Yeah, welcome. Love having you. Um, All right, go ahead and throw this chair sheet up on the screen of Ken's latest reporting here alongside Ryan Grimm. The main driver of inflation is a murderous maniac in Riyadh. Saudi Arabia is withholding oil production because Biden will not meet with Mohammed bin Salman after the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the president suggested. So just take us through the story. Um, What is the retaliation and how does it relate to gas prices? So the idea for the story originated in my reading of the business press, who are kind of admirably frank about how the world works because they have to make investment decisions based on it. They're writing for other investors. And so I'm reading uh, Financial Times, and they're saying just very bluntly that uh, Saudi Arabia's decision uh, not to increase oil production is having a huge effect on the cost of oil internationally. And I'm thinking, well, oil undergirds everything because that's how you ship goods across, you know, the ocean and in in ships, that's how you move things via truck, that's how you build things. So this gets factored into everything in ways that we don't even think about. So I'm thinking, well, this must be at least a component um, of the inflation and of the gas price increase that we're seeing. So I start poking around and I start to find all kinds of evidence not really focused on by the media in a sort of um, way that would frame it so the public would understand how important this is, but kind of peripherally talking about um, you know, MBS's decision potentially being political. Uh, President Biden gave a talk at a CNN town hall a couple of weeks ago where he said that um, this is owing, he, he attributes uh, the Saudi crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman's decision not to increase production to his decision not to meet with him personally. Mm-hmm. And I was amazed that that didn't get more coverage because this is a huge, perhaps the central issue you know, facing families, facing people today, facing the global economy right now, and there's hardly any discussion of it outside of the business press. No, I couldn't. I couldn't agree with you more. One of the things we've called for, I've called for specifically, is I'm like, you need to drag this king over here and be like, hey, what's going on? What you know, you need to start pumping. We give you guys a lot of money. We sell you a lot of weapons. I mean, you know, which you know. there's precedent for. Right. Yeah. President Trump did very adeptly. It, exactly. Not right. just in the 2018 uh, run up to the uh, uh, midterm elections when he uh, ordered him to increased production, but in 2020 last year, when he told him to cut production because it was uh, hurting uh, domestic U.S. shale and yes. um, fracking production. So perhaps not something I agree with, but um, he, uh, again, he was very deft at going about this. He got together with some representatives and uh, started crafting legislation that would pull U.S. military out of Saudi. Guess what happens? Within two weeks, MBS obliges. Oh, any, any, smart. Any, uh, Cuts production. So what is hmm. it, why isn't the, why aren't the Biden administration doing more about this? I mean, like, why are they not exerting more pressure on Saudi Arabia? Why is Congress not getting involved? I mean, is it just a question of Saudi money in Washington and influence? Well, that's the unfortunate thing. So um, as I was saying uh, off camera, that I feel sort of vindicated not chasing after the steel dossier, not because <laughs> I don't want to be critical of the president, but because I just thought it was a lot of innuendo and it seems sort of thin. And something I focused on instead was Gulf influence. And yep. what I found over the last four years is that this is very bipartisan in nature. I'm not saying it's exactly the same. I do think Trump re- represents a departure from the sort of intensity of that uh, relationship between the Gulf and Washington. Um, but it's something that's affected both parties. And for that reason, they don't like to talk about it because you open up that door, you're going to find skeletons that implicate both parties. So um, I think that that is a big reason that they don't want to talk about this. Because if the, you know, I think American people understood the, uh, influence that they're able to exert this um, foreign government, they might have attitudes about what, you know, what the heck we're doing there with uh, military forces that exist, the amount of arms that we sell them, the President Biden, who, you know, uh, in not meeting with the Crown Prince does represent a departure from the norm, but still is going to sell them 500 million in weapons, or at least wants to right now. It seems like Congress is trying to fight them. So clearly this is something that is going to make both parties not look great, and that it tends to be when the public doesn't get to hear a whole lot about these kind of things, when it makes both parties look bad. Well, and let's not forget that the Supreme Court has just paved the way for foreign actors to have more influence in our politics, allowing money to back interest groups um, from foreign governments. I wanted to get your reaction to a quote you have here from Trita Parsi, who, of course, is a um, friend of our show. Yeah. By the way, that was the FEC, not the Supreme Court, that made that decision, uh, who said that he sees these actions from Saudi and MBS as part of a broader Saudi strategy to favor the GOP, as MBS calculates that a Republican president will reinvest in the idea of dominating the Middle East militarily, which makes the relationship with Saudi Arabia critical once more. What did you think of his comments? Yeah, I think that's important because whatever you think about the Iranian regime, and there's plenty of criticisms you can make about it, Trita makes them himself, um, 
a relationship like that becomes a sort of pressure release valve where the more that you're able to go to them potentially as a broker, international broker, someone that you can work with, the less you have to rely on the Saudis, not just regionally, but for oil as well. And so those two things are connected. And I wish that there was more um, cognizance of that. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes the most sense in the world. I mean, at this point, whenever we're seeing, what else can we see out of the side of the Saudi regime? Like signs that this would confirm that MBS is simply just upset that Biden won't show him the deference that he deserves after he ordered the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Are we gonna see more pushback from Riyadh against the Biden administration whenever they just issue empty calls? Like what else can we look for, different signs of the future? The debate kind of quietly going on in Washington right now is how to respond to this. And so there's talk about tapping the strategic oil reserve, which yep. I think just kind of kicks the football and doesn't really address the problem. There's other talk of you know getting tougher with him as Trump did, which to his credit, he knew how to wield power in certain respects. Yes. And in this regard, we have a lot of leverage and there's a whole lot of, I think, illusions about the nature of the relationship. So if you look at the amount of Gulf money sloshing around these think tanks, I think that that plays a role when these think tanks push a narrative that suggests, you'll hear this again and again when you talk about getting tough on Saudi. They say, well, if we're tough on them, they might run into the, they might drive them into the arms, arms of the Russians, mm -hmm. might drive them into the arms of the Chinese. The thing is, we have set up a system there that they are dependent on, not just military, but we run a lot of their technology. We of run course. a lot of the um, you know trappings of, of, of a developed society that um, you know they developed very recently and they are dependent on us for. It's not easy. I was talking to a senior Senate aide who I quote in the story who, who told me that for us to pull out in another state like Russia to go in there and to kind of set themselves up and be able to run the society, that would take 10 years at the very least. And that's what some of the smarter analysts said, I yeah. think will tell you. So to think that um, MBS can just do that on a whim is very unrealistic. And I think that there's a political motive behind um, you know, why some of these quote unquote experts say that, that we can't get tough on them, which is that they're getting money from these guys. Yeah. So do you buy into the notion that um, Trita is laying out here that effectively MBS has decided they want to put their thumb on the scales to try to help Republicans win? I think so, yeah. And I think the nature of the relationship, I'll give you an example. There was just indicted a top uh, uh, fundraiser for the Trump administration who was a senior advisor to his campaign, I Tom Barrick. Yes. A billionaire. How often do you see a billionaire get indicted? That's yeah, crazy. For unregistered foreign lobbying on behalf of the UAE. And the evidence laid out, of course, you know, this is alleged. He's still, you know, people deserve a, mm. a fair trial. But if you look at the allegations of DOJ, it looks pretty damning. And it looks, it seems to um, evince a, uh, 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 you know, a pay-to-play relationship on the where you know the UAE gives him money, and then uh, he influence pedals on the path of, on behalf of the Trump administration. And there was all sorts of stuff like that going on. To give you an example, in 2017, I had a story about the gifts that they were showering on Trump when he visited uh, uh, Riyadh as his first foreign trip, which in itself was a huge and yeah, dramatic a big departure state. from what right. normally a president visits either Mexico or Canada. That going back or the UK, yeah, yeah. that going back years and years right. and years. This was a huge coup politically for MBS internationally at a time that he's trying to prop up his legitimacy as a leader to have him come and visit. So I find out under a FOIA Freedom of Information Act request that they had showered him in all these crazy gifts. It was kind of funny because, I mean, they do do that. But what we ended up finding a few weeks uh, ago was that a lot of those gifts, they're supposed to be given to the federal government, like the National Archives. The National Archives, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To prevent them from exerting undue influence. A lot of those gifts they can't find. They don't know what happened to them. <laughs> perfect. That's the, that's the perfect Trump perfect story. Perfect Trump story, which of course, <laughs> to bring this full circle with yeah. the media critique, because yeah. you point out you know, that they went chasing steel dossier and got obsessed with Russia when this was the real major influence peddling scheme. Of course, totally. they picked up your reporting yeah. and New York Times felt free to use it without giving you your proper <laughs> due when you wrote the story like three years before they did. But we always right. give you the proper due here. Ken, Great. thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your analysis and reporting here. Great to be with you guys. Hey. Our pleasure. Thanks, Ken. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate it. If you can help us out, support the show, all of that premium link is down there in the description. We have big plans coming, some original reporting and more that we're working on. Can't wait to unveil it all about, to guys. you. Very exciting. Thanks for your support. It means a lot. It's the only way that we can continue to do what we do. Love you guys, and we will see you back here tomorrow.
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.